seed testing tells you information about the seeds to see whether this fits your purpose for planting. For example, when I sell seeds to you and say this is 85% germination and 99% purity, you want to pay money for what you have. Oregon State University Seed Lab was established in 1909 in terms of the wide range of crops that we test on the wide range of tests that we provide for our customers. This is one of the largest lab in the world. We are gonna go and see the different seed quality tests. There is no one test magically can give you all the information about the seeds. The quality of the seeds actually doesn't start when the seeds arrive to the lab and we test it. it the quality seeds start in the field. The seeds actually can come from any grower or farmer, from seed companies, from researchers, from official organizations such as BLM. The first test we run is a purity test. We divide the samples into four components. The pure seed, weed seeds, other crop seeds, and then inert matter. You use the divider to obtain the working or testing samples out of the submitted sample. So the seeds will go into the top and get mixed around and get split into two roughly equal halves. So we'll uh, keep taking these halves and we'll keep mixing them down to get our working sample from the submitted sample. That way we're getting a good representative sample of the entire lot. Anytime you mechanize seed procedures, you reduce the subjectivity of people. The machine would be consistent. So there is uniformity in seed testing. The screens operate different components based on the seed shape and seed size. The goal of this screening process is to separate the samples of seed based off of their size, and it's just an extra step to help our analysts when they are looking at the seed. I'm going to turn on our machine that will use vibrations to work our seed down through the screens. If we have a little tiny weed seeds or noxious weed, it can go through a screen while the good pure seeds will stay. So this is sending the vibrations from this bottom board all the way up through these uh, pans so that the seeds can kind of move around and work their way through the holes. And so then I will put it in an envelope for the analysts to look at. Once the analyst gets the reduced samples, then there is what we call ErgoVision station. And this is basically a machine that has lenses that can enlarge the seeds. I'll run through the seed, we put it through the, the funnel, and um, just stop and take out the contaminants. A contaminant is a different seed that is not part of the sample that I'm working on. Other seeds end up in the sample by birds, animals, water, wind. We can discover what's in the sample so we can inform the customer. This is a personal collection of all the seed that's come through Bend, a seed extractory. This is just my herbarium. It starts out with the family names of each uh, seed and different species. It's really hard to identify them all because there's so many different species. But preserving these seeds really does help. One of the common uses of the information seed testing is certification. Seed certification sets the minimum quality standards that the seeds has to meet. If you have premier seeds, you may sell it for higher price. This site here I'm inspecting for a seed collector. 
to collect the seed off of for source identified seed certification. What I look for when I do a site inspection is to see that the species is there, that there's enough seed production potential for the collector to get that number of pounds of seed. The seed company will request tags from us that has all of this information on it, not specifically the GPS coordinates because that's kind of proprietary information, kind of like your favorite fishing spot. It does have enough information that the seed buyer can tell if that seed is gonna work on their site. So when we sell those seeds, the customer wants to make sure that the seed that they're buying is adapted to the place that they're gonna plant it. The Yellow Tag Source Identified program comes into that because the Utah Crop Improvement Association, as a third party, says, yes, I can verify that this seed came from that site, and here's a yellow tag that certifies that claim. Sampling is part of the seed certification process so that we make sure that the seed that's sent to the different seed buyers, that seed is representative of what was collected. We have a label that we put on that shows that we have sampled the seed and what tests are required. Then we want purity, germ, and TZ. The next step, this will go to the seed lab. So the pure seeds now is going to be tested for viability, meaning are they alive or not? What I'm about to show you here is a test called TZ test. TZ test is a chemical physiological test. Basically, we use the staining to tell the seeds are viable. The seeds going to be put in a TZ solution, and the TZ solution by itself is colorless. But when it reacts with the viable seeds, where the seeds are alive, the color will change, becomes red. This seed here, you can see the dark color, black color one, that's a seed coat there. Normally for seeds, if we soak them overnight, you bite in the water, it will soften. But some seed coat, they just doesn't get softened. And it's hard to pierce or to cut. So therefore we, we need to use a different tools to penetrate those seed coats. Expose the embryo there. You see the white color, that's what we want. So the TC solution can get inside the seed coat to stain the embryo. So you can see for this seed, like a peach, the coat is very thick and you can cut it or pierce it. Then we'll use a tool like this, the cracker, like not cracker like this, to crack the seed coat. <laughs> <laughs> that's an inside embryo and that's a stone, the outside coat. You can see how thick it is. When seeds are softened, you need to be pierced in order for TC solution to get into stand the embryo. To pierce, we have different size needle. Two piercing is optimal. Then we can get a TC solution to send the seeds entirely. After the piercing, now the seeds are ready to be soaked for about 24 hours for standing. So after evaluation, the seeds are divided into two categories. You can see here, on this side, the seeds are stained red. Those are viable seeds. That means they're alive. On the right here, unstained seeds, those are non-viable seeds. There is two main viability tests, the germination and the TZ test. And the objective of the uh, standard germination test is to achieve maximum potential germination of the sample. Now, Bob is going to show us how she conducts the germination test. It starts in this box, so we just lay the seeds in. We'll put the lids on these and band them all together and they'll go to the germinators. And in seven days, it'll look like this way. That's seven days growth right there. This germination chamber here is adjusted for 1525, which is applicable for uh, cool season grasses. And depending on the rule, we leave it for a week or two weeks, or in some species, three weeks. Seeds is, is, you know, you are contributing to the most important element that keep human being alive. How, how cannot I love it? <laughs> 